Hello, Mike here. Now, my aim of this video is to create the best resource that answers the question, what is Amazon SageMaker? Now, think about this. If I was to ask you, what is S3? Then if you're familiar with AWS, you'd be able to answer that question. It's storage inside of the cloud. If I asked you, what is EC2? You could answer that question. It's virtual machines inside of AWS. But if I asked you, what is SageMaker? What's Amazon SageMaker? Then you might have a little bit more of a problem answering that in such a succinct way, because SageMaker isn't a service. It's an entire collection of things. It's got uh, toolkits in there. It's got SDKs in there. It's got APIs. It's got example code. It's got containers. It's got entire tools that you can use. It's got sample code. It's got sample projects. It's got documentation that all genuinely make up what I would consider as being Amazon SageMaker. Now, I'd like to present in this video a way of looking at it that I think will be helpful because it's important to have a kind of mental picture, I think, of what SageMaker is in order to be able to really get to grips with it and use the service. Now, if you have a look on Amazon's webpage, the sort of brochure page, if you like, for Amazon SageMaker, it will tell you that it essentially helps you with the preparation, the building, the training and the tuning, and the deployment and the management of machine learning projects. So prepare, build, train, tune, manage, and deploy. And that's true, of course, but there's so much more to it than just that. Each of those sections has so many levels that you can dig down into rather than slicing it vertically into these different vertical things that it can do. Let's also look at it sliced horizontally. And I think that we could do that into three layers. At the top, we're going to look at the different user interfaces into SageMaker. In the middle, We'll look at the machine interfaces, if you like, into SageMaker. And at the bottom, we'll talk about the infrastructure that SageMaker has in place. So up the top, in terms of the user interface, how do we actually interact with SageMaker? The first one, of course, is the AWS console. You log into the console, you can click around with your mouse, you can make things happen. You can do that with all of the AWS services pretty much. So yes, you can do all of those things, preparing data, building and training models and deployment. You can do it all in the console. The next one to talk about is SageMaker Notebooks. Now SageMaker Notebooks is a managed Jupyter Notebook server so you can create with just a couple of clicks a SageMaker notebook server or a Jupyter notebook server to contain notebooks. And those notebooks allow you to interact with anything actually, but primarily the use case I suppose is to work with machine learning and data science and at some point link into SageMaker. Now if you're not familiar with Jupyter notebooks, then please become familiar with Jupyter Notebooks because they are really awesome tools. I can describe them, I do describe them as essentially wiki pages of running code. Uh, you can have a document, which is the notebook itself. In there, you can have rich text with images and graphs and proper explanation as to the project that you're working on. And then you can have sections of code. And these code sections are not just sort of syntax highlighted, but you can actually execute them, you can run them on the server inside of the notebook, and the output will be shown just below. So they're really useful for sorting out your own thoughts. They're really useful for being able to share what you're doing in a data processing space, for example, with others who have got their own server and you can share your notebooks around. So we should probably talk about that in more depth in another video, but SageMaker Notebooks is a managed server to help you uh, use those inside of the AWS environment. And that is really an interface into SageMaker. There are a number of example notebooks that are made available inside of that environment that will show you how to do various things with SageMaker in data preparation and training and hosting of models. And those examples, the example notebooks that you have are part of SageMaker. They actually contain code which is production quality in many cases and can be taken and adapted to what you want to do. The next 
interface, user interface into SageMaker that we need to talk about. It's the elephant in the room, it's the big one, and that's SageMaker Studio. This is where a lot of focus and attention is going in terms of surfacing new capabilities from SageMaker as a whole. Now, SageMaker uh, Studio is actually a sort of iteration on top of Jupyter Notebooks. It's actually Jupyter Labs, the open source project, which has got uh, extensions and add-ons pre-installed into it that help it to integrate more tightly with SageMaker services. So it's, again, it's a user interface. It's very notebook-centric. We can still work with all of our notebooks in there. Um, but we've also got all these add-ons that provide this extra capability. And there is a whole world of SageMaker Studio that I really want to dive into. In fact, I was putting together content about SageMaker Studio when I realized that actually I needed to take a step back and talk about SageMaker as a whole. So we definitely need to dive into that space. And that forms the three main ways that from a user interface point of view, I suggest that you can interact with Amazon SageMaker. So you've got the console, you've got SageMaker Notebooks, and you've got SageMaker Studio. Now you could have others. There are ways that you could use Visual Studio. There are ways you can use other services like Databricks to integrate with SageMaker. But in terms of products which are in the scope of SageMaker itself, those are the three that I wanted to focus on here today. Now, Going down a level, we now have the machine interaction. How do we actually interact with the services actually? And so you might know that underneath the surface of everything in AWS, there is the AWS API. And the API endpoints that we use, we connect into to be able to configure all of the services inside of AWS um, and to create our S3 buckets and to create our EC2 instances. And of course, we can also use that to manage our resources and to create things inside of SageMaker. But we don't usually use the API. We either use, say, for example, the web console, which is using the API under the hood, or we use an SDK, and we use our favorite uh, scripting language or programming language of choice, and its SDK, Software Development Kit, to interact with the API on our behalf. And it sort of, it abstracts us away from the, a bit of a complexity of dealing with that API and puts us in a more familiar development environment. And so, the SDK for me, for my choice, is Boto3 because I like to use Python, but there are SDKs available for many other languages and scripting languages as well. And so when it comes to SageMaker, you can use these SDKs to interact with SageMaker and make things happen. But in addition to those normal SDKs, SageMaker has also got its own SDK. And actually looking in more depth into this SDK, you can actually kind of see the ideas about the way that the custodians of SageMaker sort of think about the way that it works. There are a number of high level class objects like the estimator, for example, and the preprocessor that uh, help you to do tasks inside of SageMaker rather than having to deal with the lower level API or even the so-called lower level SDK in Boto3, these um, SDK objects uh, abstract you away, add a little bit more business logic in there and help you work with SageMaker. So this is actually a really important SDK inside of the whole Amazon environment and obviously very important from the point of SageMaker. So we have a number of different ways that we can interact with the underlying um, ecosystem of SageMaker. And of course, these plug into that upper layer that we were talking about. The console uses the API. You can use Boto3 or the SageMaker SDK inside of a notebook in either SageMaker Notebooks or SageMaker Studio. So they absolutely have a linkage there. The next layer down is where things get a bit interesting. And it's honestly, it's one of those layers that you kind of feel like you know it's there, but it's kind of, you're abstracted away from it quite often that you kind of forget in a way, but it's important, especially when you're new to SageMaker, to realize that this infrastructure level is actually there. So what have we got down here? We've got containers. These containers are not just 
empty containers necessarily. What we've got here are SageMaker containers. They're managed by AWS to actually integrate into the SageMaker environment, and they form this really important part of the way that SageMaker works. So we have containers that, broadly speaking, have not much in them, but they do have the running libraries inside there for popular frameworks. So TensorFlow, MXNet, PyTorch, Scikit-learn, there are others that they have the a capability inside of these containers to run workloads that you provide. So you don't need to deal with containers unless you want to. You can just put your code into this container and run. And you don't need to actually orchestrate the containers, as we'll see in just a moment. Now, the next container along are the fully managed containers that actually have uh, algorithms already on them. So there are built-in algorithms into SageMaker which can solve a number of the problems that you might have, common machine learning problems, straight away. So things like image classification. There's a convolutional neural network already built into a container. You can just pick it up and use it through the SDK. There's uh, object detection. You can just pick it up and use it. XGBoost, uh, principal component analysis, PCA. A number of these algorithms that are already put together and put in inside a container and optimized to run inside of the AWS environment. And these are really useful if you just want to run a fairly standard algorithm, then it's there, just use it. And the third part of this underlying infrastructure that I want to highlight is the orchestration side of things. Now, you can run containers in many places inside of AWS. In fact, the list of places you can run containers just seems to grow and grow. Lambda functions now, obviously ECS, EKS, with Fargate, without Fargate. You can run it in AWS Batch. You can run it in an EC2 instance. You can run containers wherever you like, almost. Um, but this is another place you can run containers is inside of SageMaker. The SageMaker SDKs or APIs give you the ability to very easily, in just a couple of lines of code, spin up infrastructure, spin up those running containers, and deploy software to them, deploy the models, essentially, to those containers, and run them at scale, at production quality, just with a few lines of code. And can you do that elsewhere? Could you do that yourself? Absolutely, yes, you could. But the whole idea here, standing back, looking at everything that we've just looked at there, is that SageMaker is an entire ecosystem. It's an entire environment for a data scientist or machine learning engineer to spend their entire career in this space. This is all they need to use in order to be able to carry out their job and do what they need to do. And that's my vision for SageMaker. Yes, we get to prepare our data, and we get to build our models and train our models and deploy our models. But I also want to look at it from these depths of the technology in the stack, the user interface, then the machine interface, those APIs, and then the underlying infrastructure, which is there specifically for SageMaker. I put this together. I sort of came up with this, and I've been working on this because I've been trying to explain how SageMaker works as part of the course that I'm putting together to help people to get good at machine learning inside of the AWS platform and ultimately pass the AWS Machine Learning Specialty Certification. If that's what you're interested in, then I've got a course that you might want to take a look at. There's going to be a link available below. But that's all I've got for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching my video all the way through to the end as well. Um, one thing, if I can ask you to do one thing for me, that's drop a comment below if you want me to go into detail on any of those particular sections. I'm definitely wanting to do something on SageMaker Studio. I'm definitely wanting to do something on the SageMaker SDK as well. But anything else that you want to know about SageMaker or anything to do with machine learning inside of AWS, then drop me a comment and uh, I'll make sure that we get something up on the channel that covers that. Like and subscribe, all of that kind of stuff. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.